Hi, GCA artists. Another Tuesday, another art project with Mrs. Barnes. Hope you're ready to create. By now, you've had a chance to watch the video on the fabulous ceramic artists in Metepec, Mexico, and know that they choose to kind of focus on three subject areas like the suns, the tree of life, and the beautiful mermaids. And so we're going to let that be the inspiration for our next piece of art. No, not in clay this time, but in paper. And we're going to be inspired by the sunshines that they've done. And so get ready because we're about to begin our next project. Here we go. Okay, so here are your supplies that you will be needing. You'll find the paper clipped papers in your bag and it is a red background paper that we'll use for the matting later. And your nice white square paper, it should have Mexican sun written on it somewhere. You'll also need pencil and eraser and warm colors of markers. Now listen up everybody. I did paper clip a bag of warm colors of oil pastels for this project, but I'm going to make a change here. So lay those oil pastels aside and let's get out our red, our yellow, and our orange markers. Okay, no oil pastels, markers instead. All right. Now, if you have a big fancy set of markers that has more shades and colors, you might want to add like a yellow orange in there if you have it. So let's think warm colors. Now, when I say warm colors, I'm talking about the colors that you might see in a campfire. So think about that red and yellow and orange. And for our sunshine, of course, the warm colors will be just perfect. So let's get started, get your supplies ready, and let's begin. Okay, so in your packet, your picture, your paper would look something like this if you're in K1. I had already kind of gotten the right size circle for you. I've added the marks around, and you might even see one triangle drawn. Do you see the dots that are in between the little lines? That's going to help us draw the rays of the sun, okay? So here's what you will do. I'm just gonna kinda let this go straight out to the corner because that's the way it's pointing, very lightly. And from this dot, up, and from this dot, over. There's another point of my sunshine. Now, you may notice there's not a lot of room here, so we're gonna go on to the edge. From the polka dot to the top, from the polka dot to the top, and we are going to continue around the circle that way from dot to top of the triangle, dot, all the way around. And on certain sides, you're gonna find out your pointed sun rays are going to be a little shorter. And that is okay. So out to this corner, here I go. So if you'll just take a minute and go around and you'll have your sun completed. And don't forget, get those sun rays really reaching out. You don't want them to be tiny. You want them to be big. And there's our sun. Now, if you're a second or third grade student, um, you're going to find something in your home to trace. I used the lid from the coffee can and I traced it. And you're going to do this. You're going to add right at the top a mark and at the bottom a mark. You've done with this with you were in third grade for sure, you've done it at the side and at the side. Now in between these two marks, place a mark. In between these two, another. In between these two, another. And this is right across the, mm -hmm, I like that. Between these two, we'll put another and it's going to be right across from there. Now in between those little lines, we're gonna put the dots that I just talked about. And then you too are going to go around the circle and you're going to add the rays of your sun. Don't forget to extend that line up and don't forget that you'll have some short sides and there you go, all the way around, just like I just was talking about with K1. All right, now you should all be, and I'm gonna flip this over, you should all be at some point here. I know I traced the other side in red, that's okay. 
Now, in between each of those sun rays, we're going to add a wiggly one. So I'm going to draw a line that goes out very lightly. I'm hoping you can see it. I'm going to press a little harder just in case you can. In between each of those points, I'm adding a line, and then I'm going to do this. Wavy. I'm going to add the type of sun ray that makes you feel like there's some heat coming off of that sun. All right, wiggle lines. I know the line tells me the direction I'm headed. Yes, make them fat. We want something really good to color in here and so on and so forth until we really have a very cool Mexican sun. You with me? Let's add the face. All right, so we're gonna talk about some facial features, eyes, nose, and mouth. And that is really what's going to make your sunshine stand out. So I'm gonna show you a few shapes for eyes. Start out with straight lines and add bump, bump. You can put the pupil of the eye here. Now, you could also do straight lines, bump, bump, and you could do the pupil part hanging from the top of the curve. Okay, if you do bump, bump, and tilt them in that way, and hang the curved line, well, now I kind of have angry eyes, a little stern looking. Mm -hmm. And so you could also do curve, curve, and then hang down the circly part. And, oh my goodness, maybe some eyelashes on that guy. Okay. So those are some great examples. Of course, you can always do ovals. And we could have Mr. Sunshine looking over to one side. Or we could do ovals and have Mr. Sunshine looking over to the other side. Mm -hmm. And of course, you could have him looking up or down. Okay, you could do Lemon eyes, these look like most realistic. And then we do the iris, that's the colored part of the eye. And then the pupil. Ooh, and those would be some very fancy eyelashes on this guy, yeah. So the lemon eyes are good. And let's see, what else could we do? Hmm, hmm, I'm thinking. I'm gonna do those again, the lemon eyes and show you that you could have the iris and the pupil over here so your sunshine is looking in that direction. So you've got it. There are so plenty of examples for eyes, okay? Now let's flip my paper over. Ah, more eyes looking at me, holy cow. And let's talk about noses. Since I have those eyes there, let's draw two lines down and then just make bump bump for a nose like that. I could also do a nose that just is like that. Maybe add a little curvy part on each side. So there's a nose. He looks, yeah, there we go. You could, I kind of like to do it with eyes because it makes more sense, doesn't it? And you could make a really fat nose, okay? But I don't want you to worry too much about how you get the nose. A simple line with some nostrils would be good, okay? You can do a fancier nose if you like. Um, you know, experiment. Try on scrap paper first until you get what you like, okay? And then there is mouse. Now you could do a big smile. If you add a second line, now you have an open smile. You might even want to put some teeth in there. You know how to draw squares, add them in. You could just do a big smile with lips. And we need bump, bump, our little mountain top, and then a lower lip. You could do that. You could do a really surprised mouth. <gasps> and then do this on the inside, a bump, and it looks like his tongue is in there. And that would go great with this face over here, wouldn't it? Holy cow. 
have some fun designing the face of Mr. Sunshine. You can go back and look at the first video I did and, and take a look at some of the real examples of the sunshines that the Metepic artist did in ceramic and have fun with that. Now, if you wanna do just a mouth at rest, you can do that. And you can do lips or no lips. I'm gonna do, ooh, that was a barely a bump. Okay, you can do just straight line if you like. And you could, I suppose, although sunshines always, to me, seem rather cheery, you could do kind of a droopy mouth. And how about, oh, here's another idea for your eyes. I remember once teaching this project and a student wanted to do this, a lemon eye, and make it very fancy with some eyelashes. And then they did the other one like this. And they kind of made that a little fatter. And it looked as if their son was winking. That's correct. So once you kind of figure out what eyes and nose and mouth you want to do, it's time to start practicing putting them on your sun sunshine. So draw some free circles on a piece of scrap paper and say, well, I'm going to make a face and try it out first. Oh well, yeah, I think you need some eyebrows. You can add those too. All right, once you know exactly what face you're interested in, then it's time to go back to the good paper and put it on. So I'll come back to you in just a second and you'll see what I've decided on. Okay, so I've kind of decided on this big, smiley, happy face because we could all use an extra smile about now. What do you think? When the sunshine comes out, it makes me feel like this. So this is the kind of face that I chose. And I hope you can see it. I used a pencil first. And once I've got this done, notice I added eyebrows. I have a little bit of eyelashes going on here. I have a nose and an extra nostril. And I've got some bare space left. I know I have some here. And you know what I'm gonna do right here? I'm gonna put a heart right in the top of my sun. There we go. I kind of like it, yeah. And then I feel like, wow, I could go around the inside of this circle and I could just do little triangles. And so I'm adding those extra patterns and details that the Metepic artists like to add to theirs. Now, when I get close to something like eyelashes or the eyebrow, I can draw them a little smaller then get larger again, and then when I get up in here, I'm gonna go pretty small because I don't wanna bump into my heart. Draw very carefully, and look, we've just added some really cool pattern. Now I'm gonna go even further. I think I'm going to do a circle here and a circle here, and I am going to draw a very cool flower on the sunshine's face. Yeah, there's one, and there's two. Now, I can tell you what, this design of that face fills the circle. There's not a lot of background, it's mostly design, and I love that. You might even say to yourself, well, I'm gonna go fancy here, and I'm gonna add in my point sun rays, I'm gonna add something extra. I don't care, maybe it could be, well, I've done these little triangle points, sort of, but you could do anything you want. You could add a circle, a triangle, and something in your sun rays. Now, this is start of, sort of looking like the art of Mexico. I want you to take your time. I want you to think carefully before you commit to the paper. And then I want you to decide what you could add more in that space to fill it up that will make it look more interesting. I'm gonna add inside my little wavy flames, I'm gonna add an extra oomphor in there. The more details you add, the better it will look. And you know me, I love details. So once you've got this all done, you're not gonna outline with the black Sharpie, we're going to use 
our warm colors and we're going to start completing this. The fun is about to begin. Well, here I am and I am starting to use my warm colors to outline and I have them all ready to go. And so basically you're going to stay right on the lines that you drew. That's very important when you're outlining. So be sure you stay right on top of your pencil lines and then you are going to have some fun. And all you're going to do is outline around, do not color anything in. Not now, not yet. I think I'm going to have his teeth be yellow. And my other yellow is kind of out. Oops, I colored those in. Ah, I, I broke my own rule. Sorry, you don't even have to color them in. Do so. Got it? And now I'm going to do some orange down here. And I'm going to stay on. Now, sometimes I go over it twice. And you're just going to be switching back and forth between red and orange and yellow. And if you have uh, those extra colors that we talked about, then you can use those too. And here I go, and I am not going to fill in. Caught myself that time. Now, I drew really dark so that you could see my work, and so I can still see pencil through my marker, which I really don't like. Will you draw light when you're drawing your designs and your face? All right, and we're gonna continue around, switching back and forth, only warm colors right now, okay? Only warm colors and start outlining everything, okay? Let's do that and we'll come back together in just a moment. Okay, I'm back with my outlining done. And now we're gonna have some fun. But first thing I want you to notice, maybe you already have, is some things I didn't outline with red, orange, or yellow. See how I left a couple of things blank? You can do that too. Uh, if you didn't, that's perfectly fine. And here we go with the next part. So you're going to need some water in a cup and you're gonna need a paintbrush, okay? And what we're going to do is we're going to use the markers to paint with. They are watercolor markers after all. So let's see how we can make that happen. Are you ready? All right, so the first thing you're gonna do is dip in your brush and scrape it. And then you're gonna come over here and you're gonna start rubbing just the edge of the marker. And when you do that, the marker will start to bleed a little bit and it will paint the inside of that section. Now, I'm going to rinse my brush a little and scrape it off. Now, this is the thing. You gotta find the just right. If you have not enough water well, then you won't get to be able to paint very well. But if you use too much water, it'll wash away the marker and your color will be all pale. So all you do is keep practicing with that. Maybe try it on a scrap paper and see how it goes. Rub on the color you want and then bring it into the bare space. And here you are watercoloring with marker outlines makes it so much easier because you can get your nice straight edges where you want them to be. Now, see how that's filling in? Indeed, I like it. All right, and I can go for a pretty long time before I have to wet my brush again. I can just fill this in, okay? There we go. So now I'm switching from that orangey color where the marker was drawn around the edge. I'm going to kind of rinse my brush a little and I'm scraping it off, getting most of the water out. Now, I want the eye inside to be yellow. So I'm just going to move that yellow marker around in there. Okay. And I'm going to do the teeth while I'm at it because they're yellow. And I'm just gonna rub around. Now, if I touch into the red of the mouth, you can see it's gonna start coming into the yellow teeth. But you know what? I don't mind that so much. I think it kind of looks good. And I'm happy with it. 
All right, now I'm gonna clean my brush because I've got yellow, scrape, get a lot of the water off, not all. And then I'm gonna come in here in the iris where that orange is and the red, and it's gonna mix together. And there it is. Kind of rinse my brush, scrape, 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 and get inside the pupil. And there you go. And in this way, I'm going to go around and I'm gonna let that eyebrow and the outline of the eye, I'm gonna use that to color the whole face. Just about the time my paintbrush runs out of paint, I bump into another line and the marker carries me through. Now I'm just gonna, you can go right over the top of this and make it reddish pinkish. A little more water on my brush, scrape, scrape, scrape. Get some picked up. And over here where you get close to the orange, it's gonna start mixing with the red, but they look good together. So we're okay with that. And we're just gonna paint in our sunshine and let those markers do their work. And I kind of like how that looks. How about you? Yeah, so I'm gonna give you some time and you can go around with your paintbrush and don't forget to scrape and grab some of that marker and then paint with it, move it around, okay? Now, again, if you keep rubbing and rubbing and rubbing, what's gonna happen is you're gonna lose your outline and we want those outlines to be there. So here's what you do. If you've rubbed so hard with your watery brush that you kind of got lost the dark outline, you can wait till it dries. I'm not even gonna wait till it dries. I'm gonna take my marker and come back in here and re-outline. And that way it looks nice and bold again. See, no harm done. All right, now I noticed that I kind of lost that dark pupil. And that's the great thing about this, dry or wet, you can go back in and say, you say to yourself, well, my heart, I wanted a darker pink than that. Okay, so let's add some marker around the edge again, re-outline it, then take your wet brush and pick up some of that and repaint. Now, mine is wet, so it's not going to work as well. And let's talk about these crumbs. This is what happens when you paint uh, our marker over something with the wet paper. It starts to pull up the fibers of the paper. So it's probably better off, you're probably better off if you wait until it dries. Now, because these colors are next to each other on the color wheel, they're gonna blend really nice together. They're neighbors. So neighbors always do well together. And there again, rub some off of that cheek line and then use it to paint with. Rub some off of the eye and the nose and then spread it around. All right, when you get over here, your orange will start meeting in with it and look really pretty and so on and so forth. Now I'm gonna tell you what, now that you've learned that you can do this with markers, you're gonna have a great time because you can do a lot of different pictures this way and they turn out really pretty and so much easier being able to marker the outlines first, right? So there you go. We're gonna complete painting it, and then I'm gonna show you what I'm going to do about these guys, all right? So let's happy paint and come back together in just a little while. Well, here he is, and he's all painted in. Looks really cheerful and sunny. I just wanna call your attention to one spot. Do you see this little blotchy thing under his eye? That came from a drip of water or using too much water. And so that may happen to you. And if it does, go ahead and take your red marker or whatever color it is right there and kind of go back over it. Now we can't really get rid of the splotch too much. I guess I suppose if we took our paintbrush, we could really be careful and try to move it off of there, but it's pretty much going to stay. But at least you can come back in and re-outline there and you don't notice it as much. All right, so the next step, and there are two parts to this, is to take a, a skinny Sharpie. 
And what I'm gonna do now is kind of outline some key spots, one of which will be this pupil area. I want his eyes to really stand out, so see how I did his pupil? And then I'm gonna do the outside of his iris. Yeah, that kind of makes it stand out. Yep, and then I might do underneath his eye, on the inside, yeah. And on the inside here, and the inside here, just to give it a little extra oomph where the eyes are. You know I like that. Okay. I'm trying to do this for the video and I can't really see where I'm headed with my pen, so I didn't do a very neat job outlining there, but you get the point. All right. I also think, well, I could probably outline these teeth to make them stand out a little better. So yes, I would go in and do that. And you can take and outline certain areas, maybe the inside of the mouth with the skinny Sharpie. Because it's a skinny Sharpie, you could outline the whole thing, honestly, if, and it really will make it stand out nicely. I kind of lost my eyelashes a little bit, so I'm gonna kind of go under each one here, make sure they stand out really well, and there you go. Now my last step would be to pick three colors that you haven't used, just three, so I'm cho I've chosen like a dark pink. Nope, that's not it, that's my red, sorry. My dark pink, green, and blue. And so what I'm gonna do first is all of these cool squiggly designs in here, I'm just gonna color right on top. And I am not gonna paint these, I'm gonna let full marker just stay right there and add some extra oomph, yeah. Kind of like it. Purple would look good there. Now we don't want to add too many more colors, you know, just a couple here and there. We want him to be primarily warm colors. And this pink just kind of goes right in, doesn't it? Yeah, that looks really good. All right, and here, and here. I think I got it. After that marker dries, if you want it to be darker, I went over this twice, so you could go back around a second time if you like. Now with my blue and green that are left, I'm gonna do my petals of my flowers. Yeah, all the way around. Now you can do this one of two ways. You could go ahead and paint these flowers, or you can color them in. And when you color them in, they're much more bold and vibrant. Wow, that stands out. And I'm gonna do the same thing over here. Go all the way around. Outline fence and fill. Oh, I got a white spot, oops. So paint or color. If you want it to be paler, you can use your water and paint it. But if you want it to be bold, use the full marker. Now I don't have a center on that, so I'm gonna come back with pink, because remember I chose three colors. And, ooh, it's starting to blend. I gotta be really careful. See, mar watercolor markers will do that. You know what I mean? All right, and then I'm gonna take that blue, and I'm going to add another touch of it in my points that are on the outside. Boom, and I go all the way around. Now I'm starting to get some of the bright color. These are really looking like Metepic Sun pieces. Too bad it's not ceramic. This would be pretty fancy. All right, and this kind of completes my design. I like it. How do you feel about yours? You know, you can go hog wild. You could say, well, I'm gonna add three polka dots now. I mean, the. There is no amount uh, limit. Well, I suppose there is a limit, but the more the merrier. Details, details, details. Yeah, anxious to see what you come up with. It's gonna be great. And there we go. This is my Metepic Sun drawing, and you just learned how to watercolor with watercolor markers. Can't wait to see yours on the portal. Show me what you've got. Whoa, one last thing I wanted to say. 
We really don't want this bare plain background, so we can just kind of go around the outside edge with our yellow, kind of make it a fat line. And when you're done making that fat outline all the way around, you know what to do. Kind of take some of this, paint it, get some marker on there, and then just kind of carry it in. Just don't bump in too much to your design. Now here's the deal. It doesn't have to be painted all the way solid in, just a little outline. And you go around and boom, you've got it. So I'd have to say, that's it, finished piece. Show me what you got, have a great week. Love you, bye.